Then, however, something happened that struck every mouth silent and forced all eyes to stare. For in the meantime, the tightrope walker had begun his work. He had emerged from a little door and was walking across the rope stretched between two towers, such that it hung suspended over the marketplace and the people. Just as he was at the midpoint of his way, the little door opened once again, and a colorful fellow, resembling a jester, leapt forth and hurried after the first man with quick steps. Come on, move on, you sloth, you smuggler, you pale face, or I'll tickle you with my heel. What business have you here between the tower? You belong in the tower. You should be locked away in the tower, for you block the way for one who is better than you. And with each word, he came closer and closer. But when he was only one step behind him, the terrifying thing occurred that struck every mouth silent and forced all eyes to stare. He let out a yell like a devil and leapt over the man who was in his way. This man, seeing his rival triumph in this manner, lost his head and the rope. He threw away his pole and plunged into the depths even faster than his pole. Like a whirlwind of arms and legs. The marketplace and the people resembled the sea when a storm charges in. Everyone fled apart and into one another, and especially in the spot where the body had to impact. But Zarathustra stood still, and the body landed right beside him, badly beaten and broken, but not yet dead. After a while, the shattered man regained consciousness and saw Zarathustra kneeling beside him. What are you doing here? He said finally. I've known for a long time that the devil would trip me up. Now he is going to drag me off to hell. Are you, are you going to stop him? By my honor, friend, answered Zarathustra. All that you are talking about does not exist. There is no devil, and there is no hell. Your soul will be dead even sooner than your body. So fear no more. The man looked up mistrustfully. If you speak the truth, he said, then I lose nothing when I lose my life. I am not much more than an animal that has been taught to dance by blows and little treats. Not at all, answered Zarathustra. You made your vocation out of danger, and there is nothing contemptible about that. Now, you perish of your vocation, and for that, I will bury you with my own hands. When Zarathustra said this, the dying man answered no more. But he moved his hand as if seeking Zarathustra's hand in gratitude. Meanwhile, evening came, and the marketplace hid in darkness. The people scattered, for even curiosity and terror grow weary. But Zarathustra sat beside the dead man on the ground, and was lost in thought, such that he lost track of time. Night came at last, and a cold wind blew over the lonely one. Then Zarathustra stood up and said to his heart, Indeed, a nice catch of fish Zarathustra has today. 
No human being did he catch, but rather a corpse. Ah, uncanny as human existence, and still without meaning. Even a jester can spell its doom. I want to teach humans the meaning of their being, which is the overman, the lightning from the dark cloud called human being. But I am still far away from them, and I do not make sense to their senses. For mankind, I am still a midpoint between something like a fool and a corpse. The night is dark. The ways of Zarathustra are dark. Come, my cold and stiff companion. I shall carry you where I will bury you with my own hands. When Zarathustra had said this to his heart, he hoisted the corpse onto his back and started on his way. But he had not yet gone a hundred paces when someone sneaked up on him and whispered in his ear. And behold, the one who spoke was the jester from the tower. Go away from this town, O Zarathustra, he said. Too many here hate you. The good and the just, they hate you, and they call you their enemy and despiser. The believers of the true faith hate you, and they call you the danger of the multitude. Yes, it was your good fortune that they laughed at you. And really, you did speak like a jester. Yes, it was your good fortune that you took up with the dead dog when you lowered yourself like that. Yes, you rescued yourself for today. But go away from this town. Or tomorrow I shall leap over you, a living man, over a dead one. And when he had said this, the man disappeared. But Zarathustra continued his walk through dark lanes. When Zarathustra had arrived at the town, there he met the gravediggers and they shone their torches in his face, recognized Zarathustra, and sorely ridiculed him. Ha ha ha! Zarathustra is lugging away the dead dog. How nice that he's become a grave digger. For our hands are too pure for this roast. <laughs> Would Zarathustra steal this morsel from the devil? Well, so be it then. And good luck with your meal. If only the devil were not a better thief than Zarathustra. <laughs> He'll steal them both. He'll devour them both. And they laughed and huddled together. Zarathustra, though, did not say a word, and he went on his way. By the time he had walked for two hours past woods and swamps, he had heard too much of the hungry howling of wolves, and he grew hungry himself. And so he stopped at a lonely house in which a light was burning. Hunger falls upon me like a robber, said Zarathustra. In woods and swamps, my hunger falls upon me, and in the deep night, my hunger has odd moods. Often, it comes to me only after a meal. And today, it did not come the whole day. Just where was it? And so Zarathustra pounded on the door to the house. And an old man appeared, bearing a light. And he asked, Who comes to me in my bad sleep? A living man and a dead one, replied Zarathustra. Give me food and drink. I forgot it during the day. Whoever feeds the hungry quickens his own soul. At least thus speaks wisdom. 
The old man went away, but returned promptly, and offered Zarathustra bread and wine. This is a bad region for those who hunger, he said. That is why I live here. Beast and human being come to me, the hermit. But not just yourself. Bid your companion to eat and drink also. He looks wearier than you. Zarathustra replied, My companion is dead. I would have a hard time persuading him. That does not concern me, snapped the old man. Whoever knocks at my house must also take what I offer him. Eat and take care. Thereupon Zarathustra walked again for two hours, trusting the path and the light of the stars. For he was a practiced night walker and loved to look in the face of all sleepers. But as dawn grayed, Zarathustra found himself in a deep wood, and no more path was visible to him. And so there he laid the dead man into a hollow tree, for he wanted to protect him from the wolves. And he laid himself down also, head first at the tree, upon the earth and the moss. And soon he fell asleep, weary in body, but with a calm soul. <laughs>